Okay, we are going to you live from Van Buren for the Lady Dogs and the Lady Eagles basketball game. We're getting started with the Lady Eagles as they announce their starting lineup with uh, number 31, Chloe Mitchell, and number... I'm sorry, I can't see her number. Number 30, Harley Sullivan. Number three, Hattie Day. Number 24, Whitney Mitchell. And number 32, Danielle Shepard. For the uh, Lady Dogs, we have number 14, Murphy. Number 12, Ella Wilbanks. Number two, Madison Mabry. Number 33, Scarlett Alcorn. And number 40, Katie Griffin. I want to give a shout out to Miss, uh, I think it was Griffin, that uh, brought me a seat. E Erica Griffin, she brought me my seat up here today. Man, she saved me. And Lady Dogs get the tip off as Murphy has the ball at the top of the key. It's stolen away by Danielle Shepard for the Eagles as she goes up for a layup and scores two right out of the gate. Will Banks has the ball at the top of the key over to Alcorn and Mabry in the corner. Will Banks over to Murphy. When all these girls start with an M. And it's knocked away by Sullivan. Alcorn takes the ball out of, the, out of bounds over to Mabry in the wing. She looks for a pass over to Murphy in the corner. Oh, inside pass to Griffin. She can't quite get a handle on it. Back over to Murphy, and she goes up for it. Oh, that's good. She scores two. And number three, Hattie Day, has a ball at the top of the key. As the Lady Eagles are... Looking for an outlet pass. Hattie Day has the ball at the top of the key. She passes it over to the wing for at Mitchell. Mitchell has a ball. She's looking for someone to pass the ball. She's got it dead. She's uh, about to lose time there as Hattie Day goes up for a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Will Banks. And she brings the ball down the floor in a hurry. She finds Mabry at the wing. She passes back to Will Banks. Back over to Mabry. Back to Murphy on the wing. She shoots three. And it's no good. It's rebounded by Mabry. She's looking for a pass. She finds Griffin. Griffin, ooh, yes, to Alcorn. It's no good. It's rebounded by Danielle Shepard. She finds Hattie Day, and she brings the ball down the floor. She finds Mitchell. Mitchell back to Day, to Danielle Shepard, and she... Loses a handle on it, and it goes out of bounds. Gillespie checks in for Mabry. As Wilbanks brings the ball down the floor, she passes it to Griffin in the corner. Back to Griffin. She drives in. She finds Alcorn in the corner there. Oh, a little bit too hard to Will Banks, and it goes out of bounds. I see some Neelyville peeps here that I recognize. And it looks like it's going to be Van Buren's ball. As
as Griffin has the ball in the top of the corner. Alcorn goes up, and it's no good. Rebounded by Gillespie. She goes up. It's no good. And Mitchell comes away with it. She passes it to Danielle Shepard. She passes it to Hattie Day at the top of the floor. She falls down. Danielle Shepard. She goes up for a layup. It's no good. And it looks like it's going to be a foul on the shot, and Danielle Shepard's going to get to shoot too. That foul's on Scarlett Alcorn. It's her first foul, first team foul. It's 2-2 two to two with 4.54 to go here in the first quarter. And it was good. And it looks like the Lady Dogs are going to get to take the ball out underneath their goal. As Griffin has it at the top of the key, he passes it to Wilbanks, who goes up, and it's good. Ties it up, 4-4 four to four here in the first quarter. Hattie Day has the ball. She passes it to Mitchell. She passes it, and she gets called for a walk. Counter checks in for Alcorn. Wilbanks has a ball, drives in, it's no good. And uh, Griffin gets it and scores. Hattie Day has the ball, she drives to the corner, hands it off to Mitchell, who loses it to Wilbanks, and she drives in. Ooh, good pass there to, you look, watch that again, to Griffin. Mitchell has a ball in the corner. She's looking for a pass, can't seem to find one day. Saves her there. And Mitchell has it back in the top of the key. She finds Danielle Shepard who passes. Ooh, good backdoor pass there. I'm sorry, that wasn't Danielle Shepard. That was uh, Chloe Mitchell. Yeah, there we go. Whitney Mitchell and Chloe Mitchell. I got a little confused there. All right, and a little scuffle on the floor when Murphy comes away with it, and uh, Chloe Mitchell gets a rebound, passes it to Danielle Shepard. Today, who's going to bring the ball down as they slow it down a little bit. And these lady dogs are playing a zone defense. Good pass underneath there to... Uh, Harley Sullivan, who scores two points for the Lady Eagles. It's eight to six here with 2.44 left in the first quarter. Ooh, tried to make a good backdoor pass there, but uh, was knocked off the hands of the Lady Eagles, and it's gonna be the Lady Dogs basketball underneath their goal. And tack on two more for the Lady Dogs as the Naylor Lady Eagles, Zoe Sprouse, has the ball at the top of the key. She passes it to Hattie Day, who has it off to Sullivan. Passes it to Daniel Sprouse, and she gets her own rebound. And Hattie Nicholson, Nicholson? I, and the Eagles aren't quite able to score, and Griffin pulls up for a three. It's no good. Sullivan gets the rebound. And it looks like someone maybe had an over-the-back call. I'm not sure what that was there. 
Yes, over the back call on Murphy, and it's Eagles ball. Eagles or Daniel Shepard's got the ball inside and she draws a foul on who is this on number 33 Alcorn for the Lady Dogs and she's going to check out of the game and Griffin's going to check in it's her second foul here in the first quarter it's 10 to 8 in the Lady Dogs favor As the Eagles inbound to Hattie Day, and she's got the ball on the wing. And it's stolen away almost by the Lady Dogs. Knocked away by Griffin. She steals the ball, brings the ball down the floor. She's looking for an outlet pass to Murphy, who gets the ball, passes it back to Griffin. Griffin pulls up for a three, but gets the double dribble instead. We have a minute 13 here in the first quarter. As the girls slow it down. And a lot of bodies clinging together down there as look like maybe Hattie Day scored two for the Lady Eagles. I could be wrong, sorry. I couldn't see very well up here. My eyes just aren't what they used to be. Towner gets a rebound and shoots one for the Lady Dog. Doesn't quite go in. Griffin gets the rebound and shoots two and she scores. Zoe Sprouse has the ball on the wing. Passes it to Danielle Sprouse, and there's going to be a jump ball. And Sullivan inbounds to Sprouse. She looks for a pass to Hattie Day. Back to Sprouse on the wing. She's looking for a pass. Stolen away by Wilbanks. Up to Murphy. She shoots a layup, and it's good. And we end the first quarter 14 to 10 in favor of the Lady Dogs. I'm going to see the Lady Bulldog cheerleaders here for a second as I get something to drink. All right, we're back starting the second quarter here. And uh, Murphy's got the ball on the wing. She drives in under her basket. Not so good. Not so good. As Hattie Day gets a rebound, she drives down the floor. Over to Sullivan into Danielle Shepard. 
And we are going to get a blocking foul, it looks like, on Griffin. And the Lady Eagles are going to take it out under their goal, inbound to Shepard, who inbounds to Sullivan. Oh, she tries to pack the backdoor pass to Shepard, and it just worked out for him as we get two points more for the Lady Eagles. Mabry to Griffin, a little bit too hard. And I'm sorry, I just ran up the bleachers. <laughs> out of breath, meaning that I probably need to do that more. And Hattie Day has it at the top of the key. She passes it to Whitney Mitchell, to Sullivan. Back door to Danielle Shepard, who tacks on two more for the Lady Eagles, who ties it up 14 to 14. Mabry shoots three, it's no good. It's rebounded by Whitney Mitchell and she is Accidentally pushed a little bit by Gillespie there. And that is her first foul, I do believe. Fifth team foul. And Hattie Day brings the ball down the floor. And not sure what the call is here. I believe that's going to be on Gillespie. I don't know what. I guess a foul on the floor. And the Lady Eagles are going to take the ball out under their basket. And, oh, let's look at that again. Sullivan knocks it off the back of uh, the player, gets her down. Rebound and shoots a layup. That's why I never like it when they uh, can't see the ball. You never know when that's going to happen. Never liked them not facing the ball. And Hattie Day steals it. Oh, tries to save it underneath their goal. They get the rebound. Sullivan goes for three and... What are we? Three, one, foul, I guess is what they're saying. Um, that's going to be on Chloe Mitchell as Will Banks and Griffin are at the top of the key, setting up a play as Will Banks is dribbling around up there. She passes it to Griffin in the corner. Oh, it's stolen away by Whitney Mitchell to, oh, can't quite get a handle on it. And Griffin gets the ball. She brings the ball down the floor inside for a layup. Doesn't get it. Oh, and just loses her handles on it. And it goes out of bounds. It's going to be Lady Eagle basketball. Naylor has pulled ahead of the Lady Dogs. It's 16 to 14 in their favor now. I apologize, I don't have the score right. And it's also the second quarter. I'm just not very good at talking and keeping score, I apologize. Double dribble there on uh, Sullivan, and it's going to be Lady Dog basketball. Five minutes and eight seconds to go in the second quarter. Will Banks has the ball at the top of the key. She finds Griffin at the wing. Over to, who's number 30 again, I apologize. Christensen, yes. I'll get their names right by the end of the season, I promise. Will Banks to Griffin. Towner, oh, she loses it. Whitney, Whitney Mitchell gets the ball, passes it to Danielle Shepard. Back to Whitney Mitchell. Today, she's driving in, looking for a Danielle Shepard who, ooh, and I believe that's going to be a foul on Griffin. Yes. 
Got a pushing foul, and we're going to have a bonus. That's two on Griffin. And Murphy checks in for her. That's the seventh team foul for the Lady Dogs. And the first one is good for Danielle Shepard. And second one's good. All right, well, Murphy's got the ball in the corner. She finds Whit, or I'm sorry, not Whitney. Oh, it's been a long day. Mabry in the wing. Oh, stolen away by Zoe Sprouse for the Eagles. She brings the ball down the floor, looking, looking, pulls back. Passes to Whitney Mitchell to Hattie Day. Finds Hattie Nicholson in the <laughs> under the goal, and they score two. And I believe Lady Dogs call for a timeout. It is 20 to 14 in the Lady Eagles' favor. Four minutes and six seconds left to go in the second quarter. Again, I want to thank Erica Griffin with uh, Griffin Log Homes. She brought me a, a nice little seat with a back so I could sit on have a bad back and it really helps and I appreciate her so very much. <coughs> and we've resumed play. Will Banks has the ball passing it back and forth between her and Mabry and they lose it. And Hattie Day has the ball. She passes it to Zoe Sprouse. Zoe's Dribbling around, she finds Hattie Day. They find Danielle Sprouse. It is lost on the floor, and it's a jump ball. Gillespie checks in from Avery. And it's going to be, I believe, Lady Eagle basketball underneath their goal. As Zoe Sprouse takes the ball out of bounds, she finds Hattie Day who passes it to Hattie Nichols, and she scores two. Is it Nichols or Nicholson? I'm not sure, sorry, I'm looking. Nichols, yes, Nichols, I had that right. And Murphy has the ball in the wing, Nick, uh, Wilbanks. Passes it to Gillespie in the corner there, and back to Wilbanks, over to Murphy. She dribbles in to Wilbanks, shoots a three, and it's good. As the Lady Dogs pull back within five, it is 22 to 17 with two minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the second quarter. As Whitney Mitchell has the ball, passes it to Danielle Shepard. She drives in for a layup. It's no good, rebounded by... Nichols, she shoots, no good, rebounded by Gillespie, and Will Banks brings the ball down the floor, passes to Murphy, she hands it off to Will Banks, back to Murphy, over to Will Banks, underneath the towner who scores two, and we are within three again, as Sprouse brings the ball down the floor, Over to Hattie Day. She drives in for two. No good. Rebounds her own ball and scores two. And Alcorn has the ball on the wing. She shoots three. It's no good. Rebound in by Murph for Murphy. And we got a push by, I want to say Sprouse. Yes. And the Naylor Lady Eagles now have three foul team fouls. 
And the dogs have the ball under their own basket. Murphy pulls up for three. It's no good. Rebounded by um, Danielle Shepard, I'm sorry. Day brings the ball down. She picks up her dribble, and I believe that Lady Eagles call a timeout. Yes, we are going to have a full timeout. For the Lady Eagles, we have one minute and 22 seconds left to play in this first half. The Lady Eagles lead 24 to 19. Okay, I don't know what's going on. I just got a low broadcast thing, so I hope everything's still working out there, but um, I'm trying. Zoe Sprouse has the ball. She bringing it down. She passes to Danielle Shepard, who scores two for the Lady Eagles. Will Banks passes to Alcorn on the wing to Murphy in the corner. She shoots three, is no good. Rebounded by Whitney Mitchell. She brings the ball down the floor. She pulls back. Passes, oh, it's intercepted by Murphy, stolen by Will Banks. She passes to Alcorn, who brings the ball down the floor. Passes to Murphy. She pulls up and shoots two, and it just is not falling for the Lady Dogs today. Alcorn passes to McGillespie. She can't get it to fall. I believe there's a lid on the basket there. And they cannot get anything to fall, and it's a jump ball with 16 seconds left to go in the first half. All right. And we finished the first half, 28 Lady Eagles and 19 Lady Dogs. And we will go to our sponsor video. Welcome to Dog Pack Media Live. Andy Earls here, your owner operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all the support. This is year two of Dog Pack Media. We're excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see in this ad video. We will be back with a live game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this production. Dog Pack Media. Your primary sponsor for the second consecutive season is Griffin Log Homes out of Van Buren, Missouri. They design and build custom long homes for you to create years of memories. They carry many different colors and styles of cultured stone at a very fair price. And they also sell 8 inch tongue and groove log beams and Sashco log and timber strains. Let them be your one stop shop for all your log home needs. Reach out to the wonderful Griffin family at 573-323-4996. Primary sponsor, Mossy Oak Properties and Mossy Oak Realty. The exclusiveness of our network combined with mandatory training programs such as Certified Land Specialist Accreditation as well as many other marketing and online service outlets will ensure that not only do your properties receive the maximum amount of exposure to the world, but your agents are the best in the business. We will continue to stay educated, informed, and most importantly, keep your best interest in mind. 573-712-2252 or www.mozarkrealestate.com. Hey guys, I love bringing the Dog Pack Media live streams to you in my spare time, but when I'm not here, I'm working at Baldwin Chevrolet in Papa Bluff, Missouri. Been selling cars for 15 years now and love the opportunity to earn your business. We have four lots full of new and pre owned vehicles to choose from, and the majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me at Baldwin Chevrolet or call me directly at 501 413 9715. I look forward to seeing you. A big shout out to DeWolf Accounting and Tax Services LLC out of Van Buren, Missouri for the support with their 2021-22 Running with the Pack Sponsorship Package. This is their second straight year of supporting and sponsoring us at Dog Pack Media. 
Please give these fine local folks a call at 573-323-4789 or 573-870-0420 for all your accounting and tax service needs. Thank you again, DeWolf Accounting and Tax Services, LLC. Kellen Hoagland would like to invite everyone out to Crude Oil Essentials in Van Buren, Missouri, health and wellness store that includes workout gear like top brand Zaya, handcrafted self-care products and cleaning products, wellness teas, supplements for the entire family, tanning, and essential oils. Don't forget, they have morning and evening yoga classes. Crude Oil Essentials, Van Buren, Missouri. Everyone at Dog Peck Media wants to give a big thank you to DeWolf Construction, LLC, for their sponsorship of our 2021-22 live streaming season. This is the second straight year of support from this outstanding local business. Whether it's residential or commercial, this is the company to call. They are your local roofers and work with remodeling or building a new from scratch. Give them a call at 573-323-4789, DeWolf Construction, LLC, Van Buren, Missouri. Dogpack Media is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report, Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company, Alton Sports Network, and our beloved Dogpack Media. New to this season for Redline is the addition of Summersville Wildcats Live. If you or your high school would like information from Redline about live streaming an event near you, simply reach out to myself, Andy Earls, at 501-413-9715. Redline Media Lines, connect the world. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, well, look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals. Monograms of all sizes, colors, and designs, fridge magnet decals, car decals, and anything else you can imagine, decal-wise. Owner Hannah Eddy has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs. Drop Dead Decals. Hey, don't forget that select Dog Pack Media live streams will be seen on our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and the YouTube app. Added advantage over Facebook, like pausing and rewinding live events. Make sure to click that subscribe to our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel. Let's go, dogs! Van Buren R1 School District app. Van Buren School District? Yeah, they got an app for that. In fact, they have a brand new app with a revamped look. It's everything Van Buren in your pocket. Documents, events, staff directory, alerts, and more. Download on the Apple App Store or get it on Google Play. Van Buren R1 School District app. As we record this ad, Dogpack Media Facebook page is up to a whopping 1,500 followers in less than one full year. That is incredible considering the population of the Van Buren city limits. We sincerely appreciate our loyal fan support of not only us, but of these hardworking Bulldog and Lady Dog athletes. Our streams have been seen by many scouts and college coaches, so let's keep this momentum going into our second year. Help us share these feeds and make sure to like and follow us. Let's go dogs! Hey guys, subscribe to our very own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Weekly posts, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. College Basketball Insider with Austin Bradley on YouTube. It is never too late to become a sponsor here with us at Dog Pack Media. When you sponsor, you aren't just supporting these people who support Van Buren Athletics. You're supporting these young men and women who work so hard and represent the Bulldogs in a manner that we can all be proud of. If you have questions about becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact us on our Facebook page or reach out to myself, Andy Earls, at 501-413-9715. Let's go dogs. Thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Dogpack Media. And thank you to the viewers for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Your live production will be back shortly.
All right, we are fixing to get started here with the sex. Sec <laughs> I can't talk. I ran up the bleachers again. Whew, that's hard stuff, I'm telling you. Second half of the Van Buren Lady Basketball versus Naylor. And it looks like we have all of our starting five back for both teams. As Hattie Day has the ball at the top of the key, she passes it over back to her. She shoots three, it's no good. And back up and score two. Sorry, I done something and I'm not quite sure what I've done. How did I do that? Oh, crud. Sorry. Um, ah, there we go. Ah, I've got us all squared away now. All right, Mabry has the ball on the wing. She passes it to Griffin. Almost loses it. Passes Murphy inside, and she goes up, and Alcorn gets the rebound, goes back up to is Griffin, and she scores two. It is 21 to 30 in the Naylor favor. As Hattie Day has the ball at the top of the key. She passes it over to Whitney Mitchell. She's looking for a pass. She can't find one. Hattie Day comes around. She tries to drive inside, but she loses the ball, and it's going to be a jump ball. And it's going to be a Lady Dogs basketball. And Hattie Nichols is checking in for Sullivan. As Will Banks brings the ball down the floor for the dogs. Passes it to Mabry. Back to Will Banks. Oh! Doesn't quite get the pass. And it goes out of bounds. And she checks out and Gillespie checks in. As Day has the ball, she passes and doesn't pass. She passes to Shepard who drives in for a layup and gets fouled. And it's gonna be on Alcorn it looks like. And she's gonna get to shoot too. That's the first foul in the third quarter, second half. Third foul for Alcorn as she checks out and Towner checks in. First basket for Shepard is good. Uh, second one is not. Oh, Gillespie almost gets a handle on it, and it's kind of a free-for-all, and it's going to be Lady Dogs basketball. Will Banks has a ball at the top of the key. She passes it to Gillespie on the wing to Will Banks in the corner, back to Gillespie, back to Will Banks. She's looking for an inside pass, can't find one. Over to Murphy on the other side. Over to Gillespie in the corner. Murphy drives in, passes it to Wilbanks on the corner for a three. It's no good. Rebounded by Chloe Mitchell. Back to Danielle Sprout or Don Danielle Shepard. I'm sorry. She drives in. Mm, no good, and it's rebounded by Gillespie, who gets it to. Will Banks, oh, tries to make that pass under the basket to Griffin, but Nichols comes in and steals it away. Lady Dogs have the ball under their basket. Will Banks shoots three, and it rolls out. These girls cannot get a basket to fall tonight. Jump basketball, and it's going to be Eagle basketball. 
And the Lady Dogs are going to press the Eagles. Day gets the basketball. She brings it down the court. Now Gillespie steals it away. Passes it to Murphy. Passes it to Wilbanks on the wing. Back to Murphy. To Wilbanks. To Gillespie. She pulls up for three. It's no good. Rebounded by Murphy. She pulls up for three. They're just going to keep shooting until they get something to fall. Danielle Shepard gets the rebound. Whitney Mitchell, she's at the top of the key. She's waiting for somebody to challenge her. She's now looking for a pass. Day drives in, finds... And it looks like she traveled on that, and it's going to be Lady Dog basketball, and we've got a timeout. I have some sandwiches for a couple people up here. I think you know who you are. Um, if you're here or you can hear me, you can come get your sandwiches. <laughs> Griffin has a basketball. She passes it to Wilbanks. Passes it back to Griffin to Wilbanks. She drives in to Gillespie, and they've got a three-man weave sort of thing going on here to Gillespie. And she shoots a three and gets one to fall. It is now 24 to 31, still in the Lady Eagles' favor. We got 3:56 left to go in the third quarter. It might have been the basket to turn this game around for the Lady Dogs. We'll see. Sullivan's got the basketball for the Lady Eagles. She's at the three-point line. She's looking to shoot or pass. She finds Whitney Mitchell. Whitney's looking for a pass. She finds Hattie Day. Shoots two for the Lady Eagles. And Griffin's got the ball. She shoots two. It's no good. Rebounded by Day. She brings bound, passes it to Sullivan, who shoots a three from the three. Ooh, good shot by her. As the Lady Eagles now have 36. 12 points ahead of the Lady Dogs right now. And honestly, the main difference is the Lady Dogs just can't get any shots to fall. Sullivan's got the ball, and she's passes it to Danielle Shepard, who's driving in the lane. Goes up, is met by Towner. It's no good. Mitchell has the ball. She finds Day. She drives to the basket, and that's going to be a foul on Towner. Kind of jumped with her on that shot. Shouldn't have done that. And it looks like she's going to get to shoot too. It's a second team foul for the Lady Dogs. First shot's no good. As Chloe Mitchell and Zoe Sprouse check into the game. And second one rolls around and goes in. It's 37 to 24 in the Lady Eagles favor. And Murphy loses it, but Wilbanks picks it up. 
Oh, stolen away by Whitney Mitchell. She goes down for a layup, but it's knocked out, knocked away by Murphy. And it's going to be Lady Eagle basketball underneath their goal. Sullivan shoots two, and it's good. Sullivan's got a nice shot. Pounder gets a shot under her goal. It's no good. Rebounded by Chloe Mitchell. Passes it out to Whitney Mitchell. Back to Chloe. Sullivan to Nichols, who scores two. And it's now 41. Um, I think 41. Or, I don't know if it's 41 or 42. I'm going to have to check that out in a minute. Sullivan brings the ball down the floor for the Lady Eagles. We got one minute to go. And we've got a travel call. Banks has the ball at the top of the key to Alcorn to Murphy, and we've got a push call on, I want to say yes, Chloe Mitchell, and the Lady Dogs are going to take the ball out under the basketball with 50 seconds left. Oh, good inside pass there to Griffin, and she scores two points. as the Lady Dogs press the Lady Eagles. And Sullivan's got the ball. She's dribbling around at the top of the key. And she drives in, she can't, oh. Cannot quite get a handle on that ball as Wilbanks finally comes up with it and passes along to Murphy. And Daniel Shepard, it looks like, is going to get the foul on that one. And the Lady Dogs are needed to take the ball out underneath their goal. Six seconds left. Inbound pass. Tried to get it to Alcorn, but it was stolen away by Danielle Shepard, and she wasn't even able to hold on to it. And went out of bounds, and the Lady Dogs are going to get a second attempt at taking the ball out under their goal. And it looks like called a foul on Gillespie, saying she was pushing. And so Lady Eagles get the ball with three seconds left, and Day goes up. And they're going to call another foul on Gillespie, and that's going to be her fourth foul at the end of the third quarter, and Hattie Day is going to get to shoot three. She misses the first one. She makes the second one. And she makes the third one. And it's 43 to 26, starting the fourth quarter. I'm gonna check on that score, because they We're going to 
to check on the score. I have 43. They've got 44 um, for the Naylor Eagles and 26 for the Lady Dogs. And we are fixing to start the fourth quarter here. 44? Okay. It is 44, they said. So we'll, we'll go with their score because Lord knows that I have been wrong. Not very often, if you ask Andy, because he knows I'm always right. But it has happened once or twice. And we're getting started here, and Daniel Shepard knocks the ball out of bounds, and it's going to be Lady Dog basketball as Alcorn passes it in to Will Banks. Over to Griffin. Back up to Will Banks to Alcorn. Ooh, tries to pass it inside to Griffin. She wasn't quite looking, and Lady Eagles get the basketball, and Daniel Shepard brings it in. And Alcorn's getting the foul on that one. And that's her fourth foul. And the tack on two more for the Lady Eagles. Mabry has the ball on the wing. She drives in. Oh, tries to pass it to Towner, but a little bit too high. It goes out of bounds, and it's going to be Lady Eagle basketball. 46-26 here in the fourth quarter. As the Lady Eagles now have a 20-point lead over the Lady Dogs. But the Lady Dogs have not given up. They're still fighting just as hard. And we have a travel. And the Lady Dogs have the basketball and Murphy passes it inside to Griffin. She turns around and tries to shoot it, but it's blocked by Nichols. And Day gets it, passes it to Sullivan and she brings the ball down. Passes it to Shepard, who has the ball at the top of the key. She looks to pull up and travels with the basketball. And Will Banks has the ball at the top of the key. It's stolen away by Day. She's looking to make an outlet pass. She finds Shepard, who drives in. Passes it to Mitchell, sort of. Lucky pass, lucky pass. To Sullivan. Turns around and shoots it. Two more. She has an easy touch. Makes a good shot. Will Banks. And timeout is called by the Lady Dogs. And my partner in crime has just shown up and trying to get a camera going. He thinks he's just going to come in here and take over, but I got news. It's in my show. What? We have six minutes and three seconds left to go. 48 is the Naylor score. 26 is the Van Buren score. Five team fouls for the Lady Dogs and two for Naylor. And Towner shoots it. Oh, it rolls out. I am telling you guys, like nothing is going in for these girls tonight. They are just very unlucky. Oh, pass by Nichols, and it goes back court. Griffin gets it and goes up with it. 
And it looks like she's fouled on the shot. But I'm not quite sure who had that foul. Uh, looks like that's going to be on Sullivan. And she's going to get to shoot two. And the first one is good. As Chloe Mitchell checks in for Nichols. Second one is good. And we're going to have another timeout. And I know Andy always checks the comments and stuff, but for whatever reason, I I can't get any comments because I don't have internet access in here, and he does. So I apologize if you guys are talking to me. I can't see it, and he just got here, so we might be able to see it in a little bit. Um, we are going to have, I believe, a JV game, or half of a JV game after this. So um, we'll bring that to you after this game is over, um, two quarters of that. And then after that, we are going to have JV and varsity boys basketball against Twin Rivers. All right, we're getting started again. Sullivan takes the ball out for the Lady Eagles. Long baseball pass today. If she gets it and goes up with it, it's no good. Towner comes down with the rebound and passes it to Murphy. He comes down to the floor in a hurry. She passes it inside to Alcorn. Oh, my goodness. These poor girls. Griffin has the ball. Passes it to Wilbanks in the corner. Back to Griffin. To Murphy in the corner. She pulls up and shoots it. It's no good. Day gets it and brings the ball down in a hurry. Wilbanks is trying to get it. Uh, Shepard goes up for a layup, and she scores. What did you do to my iPad? Where did it go? It's two points. Murphy has the ball in the corner. She passes it to Griffin, who drives in for a shot, and it's the no good. Rebounded by Danielle Shepard. She pulls it up, slows it down, passes it to Day. Passes it to Sullivan. Ooh, passes it behind the back, but she's fouled first. And I think that's going to be on Griffin. Yes, it is. And I'm not sure. That might be her fourth or fifth. Oh, I'm wrong again. <laughs> Mark it down, folks. That's the second time I've been wrong in my life. <laughs> uh, Just the second? Only the second. Only the second. You got three fouls. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> Such a rare occurrence, you guys. It is. Just, I told uh, him earlier, witnessed. like you would, you would vouch that I am rarely wrong. Yeah, never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Shocking occurrence. It is. It's it's so rare that it actually happens. Hattie Day scores two for the Lady Eagles as they continue to pull away from the Lady Dogs here, and Griffin scores two. We've got our scores backwards on the um, on the screen here. We apologize. Oh, do we? <laughs> it's all right, guys. It's okay. There we go. Now we got it. That is the correct score there. All right. 3.42 to go in this one. My wife has done an excellent job tonight. I appreciate her. Did a good job. Well, She's getting comfortable with this thing. I am. She's going to take my job for too long. ESPN, here I come. That's right. It's going to be big one time. Is good for Murphy as she makes her first free throw. Going to have to uh, get her autograph now, folks. It's going to be. It's going to cost you a lot down the road. That's right. From one dollar to two. <laughs> Double. <laughs> I charge you double. <laughs> Inflation. Uh, looks like we're going to have another timeout, and I'm not sure I might be on the. Lady. Hey, babe, what about 
What about a back rub? A back rub? <laughs> oh. Lower, lower. Lower. Okay, lower. fine. Right there, right there. All right. There it is. <laughs> uh, I should charge you for this. This is in my benefits package. Get a huddle. A huddle. Do you hear me? I'm sorry, what? It's part of my benefits package. Oh, is it part of your benefits package? <laughs> I didn't realize that. I, I didn't see that in the marriage uh, contract, the certificate there, the license. Sorry. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. I also want to give a big thank you to Erica Griffin and the Griffith family. Do what? Sorry, my wife is trying to tell me something off here there. Uh, we want to thank uh, Erica Griffin and the Griffin family uh, for bringing us this chair back up here. My wife has been struggling with some back issues here lately, and these bleachers do not help the cause, especially when you're leaning over this table like we have to to see the, the action. So thank you, uh, Miss Erica Griffin. I know she'll probably watch this back. And also a big sponsor of ours, too, with Griffin Log Homes, so we, we appreciate that. Take over, baby. This is your show, not mine. Well, it's easier for me to watch if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, this. You're better at talking than I am. I don't know. You've done an excellent job. You really have. Oh, it looks like she just uh, kind of pushed her. But Let's watch the instant replay and find out. Let's watch that instant replay over there and see. You've got it, dude. It's right there, homie. Off that screen there is what I'm looking oh. at. Well, I can't Man. see it. Tell you what, they don't have football at either one of these schools, but if they had a powder puff league, I want those two girls on my team. You know what? I think girls would be excellent football players. <laughs> I do, too. I really do. Man, that would be some – man. Y'all set screens uh, like madmen out there. Y'all run like your hair's on fire. Y'all are very physical. Yeah. Diving on the floor every game. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a blowout or – That is one thing I'll give the, the ladies credit. They set a lot better screens than guys do. Ooh, I, what's what was that? that? I don't know about she, that one. What did he call? Number four is going to get called for a moving screen here, but I don't. Ah, I thought she was set, but maybe not. Maybe not. Either way. That was Zoe. I thought she did a good job of moving her feet and getting in position, but either way. Griffin for three in the corner, and she rattles it home. 4-0 with a big shot there. and They're not going quietly into the night, uh, Heather. No, they have not given up. They have played hard every – and you weren't here for most of the game, but they have they have continued to work hard, shoot hard. They just have not been able to get anything to fall this game, and that is really what has made most of the difference. That, and they've had a lot more fouls than um, – obviously than Naylor, but um, the first half anyway. And um, they just yeah. haven't been able – nothing has gone right for them this game. If you're Katie Griffin over there, a lot of respect being uh, heard from Coach Foster here at Naylor. He said, we've talked about the one person we've got a guard out there is number 40. Number 40. How hard is that? Well, it's easier said than done. Katie Griffin's a good ball player, obviously. Naylor's obviously done a good job tonight, though. I don't know what uh, Katie and company's done over here, but uh, – Obviously doing a good job. Now, I will say this. This Naylor team was really hitting their stride last year as the season went on. We've seen them in some tournaments early on, and they had a lot of good players coming back and some newbies coming in that they thought could help. I think Naylor is going to be a surprise team this year. I really, really do. I think if that another night, what is going on now? Folks, I think that was an inadvertent um, – Horn that just went off there. I now, think another night you're going to see a different Van Buren team. It's like I said, they just have not. None of their shots have fallen tonight, and it's not because they've not had good shots. It's just that they couldn't get them to go in, and it's not just one girl; it's all of them. When it rains, it pours, and sometimes yes. that snowball gets going, and you just can't stop it. We'll watch the instant replay on this one too. If I hit it right, I guess I didn't. I apologize. There we go. Um, if, if you're the scores table down there and you're in charge of the buzzer, 
you got to make something up there. You know, you can't you can't go down with oh that was an accident or whatever. You got to like point at somebody on the court or something. You got to have some excuse for hitting that <laughs> buzzer there. She told me. To. <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> that was an elongated one too. Uh, looks Let's like see. Nichols missed both of those free throws. We got two minutes left here in the fourth quarter. It's 54 for the Naylor Eagles and 37 for the Lady Bulldogs. I want you to watch this little kid over here on the top of your screen up here. Now Sullivan thought about diving for this. That little kid's like, oh, oh, no, no, please don't, please don't. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Love the hustle there, though, from Sullivan. When those girls come running at you 100 mile an hour and you're in that front row, it's a dangerous spot to be in. I can promise you. I want to mention, too, uh, not to interrupt your calling here, but I want to mention really good crowd tonight from both sides. This is a really big gymnasium. That's good offense right there, by the way. Yeah, for a girl. Well, we've got some boys' teams coming in, too. But I sort of say for the girls' team, it's, there's quite a few people here. But yeah. I forgot there's some boys playing tonight, That's, yeah. too. Us girls, we just get no credit whatsoever. I know. It does seem that way sometimes. It's really unfortunate, too. I mean, they put in just as much work, if not more. Um, they're playing just as hard, if not harder, and it, it is unfortunate. It does seem that way no matter where you're at, and it, even back home in Arkansas where we're from, it's the uh, same story there. But, yeah, you're right, it's a really good crowd because, like I said, this is a really big gymnasium. Uh, in a smaller gymnasium, we're, we're packed to the gills right now, but such a big gymnasium, you get got a little bit extra room. 115 to go in this ball game. Pass inside there to Hattie Nichols, and it was just a little bit high and out of her reach. So we had a turnover there, and it's going to be Lady Dog basketball as Gillespie takes the ball out of bounds, passes it to Mabry. I want to mention something, too. You, I listened to a lot of the commentary on the way up here. I don't think I ever heard you mention the referees one time. And, and you're probably asking, well, why would you bring the – well, the thing is, normally when they're not doing a good job is when you're talking about them a lot. And we haven't, so I want to give the officials some credit. I feel well, like. Well, I do that because if I, you know, it's my mama always said, if you ain't got nothing <laughs> nice to say, don't say nothing Don't at say all. nothing at all. That's right. <laughs> they do not have an easy job, and you will not see me volunteering for their no, job. So. so I just won't say nothing at all. There you go. Well, they, they've done an excellent <laughs> job. And under a minute here. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will say that. I'll, I'll have the referees back No, I, I know two of them. I don't know the other one. They've been, they've been at it a long time. So they are obviously <laughs> very confident in their skills. <laughs> That's right. Seasoned <laughs> veterans. Seasoned veterans. This thing is coming. What is it? Can you shorten it up? Yeah, you can, yeah if you press it down, you can actually tighten it. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Yeah. My head's not quite as big as yours. Thanks, dear. Thanks. <laughs> Had to point out my deficiencies uh, over the live stream for thousands of here. I appreciate that. Guys are at the 10-second mark here in this fourth quarter. Looks like Naylor's going to hold on and a very impressive victory, especially on the road here at Van Buren. Not an easy place to play at. She's just going to hold it. And... The Naylor Eagles win 56 to 37 over the Lady Bulldogs. And we're going to have, I think, a JV half game. Half a JV game, yes, ma'am. That's right, half a JV so game. So we will bring that to you next. And we're going to do our sponsors for you because we love our sponsors. Love them. Love them. Guys, we'll be right back. You're watching Dog Pack Media Live, powered by Red Line Media Lines. Welcome to Dog Pack Media Live. Andy Earls here, your owner operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all the support. This is year two of Dog Pack Media. We're excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see in this ad video. We will be back with a live game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this production. Dog Pack Media. Your primary sponsor for the second consecutive season is Griffin Log Homes out of Van Buren, Missouri. They design and build custom long homes for you to create years of memories. 
They carry many different colors and styles of cultured stone at a very fair price. Hey, they also sell 8-inch tongue and groove log beams and Sashco log and timber strains. Let them be your one-stop shop for all your log home needs. Reach out to the wonderful Griffin family at 573-323-4996. Primary sponsor, Mossy Oak Properties and Mossy Oak Realty. The exclusiveness of our network combined with mandatory training programs such as Certified Land Specialist Accreditation, as well as many other marketing and online service outlets, will ensure that not only do your properties receive the maximum amount of exposure to the world, but your agents are the best in the business. We will continue to stay educated, informed, and most importantly, keep your best interest in mind. 573-712-2252 or www.mozarkrealestate.com. Hey guys, I love bringing the Dog Pack Media live streams to you in my spare time, but when I'm not here, I'm working at Baldwin Chevrolet in Papa Bluff, Missouri. Been selling cars for 15 years now and love the opportunity to earn your business. We have four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from, and the majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me at Baldwin Chevrolet or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. A big shout out to DeWolf Accounting and Tax Services, LLC, out of Van Buren, Missouri, for the support with their 2021-22 Running with the Pack Sponsorship Package. This is their second straight year of supporting and sponsoring us at Dog Pack Media. Please give these fine local folks a call at 573-323-4789 or 573-870-870. 0420 for all your accounting and tax service needs. Thank you again, DeWolf Accounting and Tax Services, LLC. Kellen Hoagland would like to invite everyone out to Crude Oil Essentials in Van Buren, Missouri. Health and wellness store that includes workout gear like top brand Zaya, handcrafted self-care products and cleaning products, wellness teas, supplements for the entire family, tanning, and essential oils. Don't forget, they have morning and evening yoga classes. Crude Oil Essentials, Van Buren, Missouri. Everyone at Dog Peck Media wants to give a big thank you to DeWolf Construction, LLC, for their sponsorship of our 2021-22 live streaming season. This is the second straight year of support from this outstanding local business. Whether it's residential or commercial, this is the company to call. They are your local roofers and work with remodeling or building a new from scratch. Give them a call at 573-323-4789, DeWolf Construction, LLC, Van Buren, Missouri. Dogpack Media is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report, Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company, Alton Sports Network, and our beloved Dogpack Media. New to this season for Redline is the addition of Summersville Wildcats Live. If you or your high school would like to information from Redline about live streaming an event near you, simply reach out to myself and your girls at 501-413-9715. Redline Media Lines, connect the world. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, well, look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals. Monograms of all sizes, colors, and designs, fridge magnet decals, car decals, and anything else you can imagine decal-wise. Owner Hannah Eddy has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs. Drop Dead Decals. Hey, don't forget that select Dog Pack Media live streams will be seen on our Redline Media Alliance YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and the YouTube app. Added advantage over Facebook like pausing and rewinding live events. Make sure to click that subscribe to our Redline Media Alliance YouTube channel. Let's go dogs. Van Buren R1 School District app. Van Buren School District? Yeah, they got an app for that. In fact, they have a brand new app with a revamped look. It's everything Van Buren in your pocket. Documents, events, staff directory, alerts, and more. Download on the Apple App Store or get it on Google Play. Van Buren R1 School District app. As we record this ad, Dogpack Media Facebook page is up to a whopping 1,500 followers in less than one full year. 
That is incredible considering the population and the Van Buren city limits. We sincerely appreciate our loyal fan support of not only us, but of these hardworking Bulldog and Lady Dog athletes. Our streams have been seen by many scouts and college coaches, so let's keep this momentum going into our second year. Help us share these feeds and make sure to like and follow us. Let's go dogs. Hey guys, subscribe to our very own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Weekly posts, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. College Basketball Insider with Austin Bradley on YouTube. It is never too late to become a sponsor here with us at Dog Pack Media. When you sponsor, you aren't just supporting these people who support Van Buren Athletics. You're supporting these young men and women who work so hard and represent the Bulldogs in a manner that we can all be proud of. If you have questions about becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact us on our Facebook page or reach out to myself and Earls at 501-413-9715. Let's go dogs. Thank you to sponsors from all of us at Dogpack Media. And thank you to the viewers for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Your live production will be back shortly. Welcome to Dog Pack Media Live. Andy Earls here, your owner operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all the support. This is year two of Dog Pack Media. We're excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see in this ad video. We will be back with a live game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this production. Dog Pack Media. Your primary sponsor for the second consecutive season is Griffin Log Homes out of Van Buren, Missouri. They design and build custom long homes for you. Shazam. Welcome back here live from the heart of the Ozarks, Van Buren, Missouri. We're here on the campus of Van Buren High School inside the gymnasium here. We've got some JV action for you. The visiting Naylor Lady Eagles and your hometown beloved Van Buren Lady Dogs. You said that earlier. I caught you, and I actually meant. I it. did not. You did. And I t I'm so proud of you. And I didn't I, do it on purpose. You did though. I, I, I'm wearing off on you or something. Uh, bloody dogs! We got that action right. Yeah. There we go. And winning the tip is the Van Buren Lady Dogs JV. And here they go in a hurry. Floater in the lane, no good. But there is a foul. Watch the instantaneous. Oh no, I don't have it on there. So I'll give you the instant replay, but never mind. I'm trying to see the number on the jersey there. If we had our baseline cam hooked up already, I'd be able to see this. I noticed we got two of our full-time varsity players out here, uh, Gillespie and Towner. That is Aspen Travis. Aspen. I like that name. Yeah. It's very cool. Aspen. Reminds me of the, uh, the Dumb and Dumber movie when they go to Aspen. Hmm. That's not what they call it, though, is it? Yeah. Oh. Offensive board by the Lady you, Dogs. You would know because that is I, one of your favorite that's movies. That's one of my favorite movies. You're absolutely right. You know me so well. Dangerous pass. They're off the knee. They're playing soccer out here. Ole, ole, ole. Dribble drive looking for the dump off. No good, but it finds its way. I mean, it finds its way to Glepsy. Glepsy strong move. No good. Offensive board in the paint going up. Soft touch. Tackle on two for the Van Buren Lady Dogs. And you look down there to see if that was Van Buren. No, it's Naylor, so take that away and put two of there. Well, you said it all go. It was, how did you do that? Okay. There you go. Oh, shot is up and good. I apologize I missed it. We we're trying to fix our scoreboard there. Awesome job by Naylor. They wasted no time getting back there and putting up some points. I'm getting my rosters set and ready. I see Peyton Hopkins, Hopkins out there. 
Lima's out there as Ooh, well. Very good. Gracie Hollis. Olivia Yarbrough also out there for Naylor. And Sandra Rodriguez. Looks like a jump ball. <laughs> this is. Oh, yes. This is intriguing. So two freshmen, a sophomore, two juniors. So they're all, through, all throughout the classes here for Naylor out there. Looks like a zone defense from Van Buren. Getting on the floor. Great hustle was Travis to no avail, though. See if Naylor can take advantage of that. They look at an open three. They're going to tee it up in that far Pretty wing. Close. No good. Rebound and a quick Can we get a replay on that, hun? Replay. Watch this. Uh, in girls' basketball, you get the quickest um, whistles that you'll ever see for jump balls. That's probably why we get so many of them. The quick whistles, you think? Mm-hmm. There's two ways to look at that. One way is the games don't get very chippy or, you know, obviously uh, out of control out there. That's one good way to look at it. Some would say let them play. I'm more of a let them play kind of gal. I think I am too, actually. I'm with you there. Good defense by Van Buren. Tell you, Naylor had moved that basketball, though, about 60 feet down the court without hardly even dribbling it, though. It was good passing, just didn't end well for them. Not the result they wanted. Number five for Van Buren, who's been very aggressive with the dribble drive, that's Kasten Cleaver. Cleaver, the freshman. Induces a foul. And we've got number 34 out there now, and that is Kalia Love. And I think I've seen another one in there for Van Buren, number 44. That's Spurgeon. Leia Spurgeon. Good strip back there by the Lady Dogs. That was Towner on the, the poke away, giving Van Buren some more Ooh. life on this possession. Good defense straight up and down. Can we get an extra replay on that one too, sweetie? Watch the defense here down low. She's straight up, straight down, never left her feet. That's that's textbook defense right there. Coach Foster, though, is not happy with something, though. I tell you, some coaches are very, very adamant. They're very emphatic with their hand gestures, and that is Coach Foster. Then some are very calm, cool, and collective. I'm looking at Tori Ricker over there, and she seems to be pretty calm right now. And there's no right or wrong way, I think. <laughs> To get your kids going, to get them uh, to be, you know, to, to coach and really try to, you know, send your message, get your message or point across. I think there's no right or wrong way. I think each coach knows their players better than anybody does. They're with them every day. It's just so unique seeing the different styles, though. Um, yeah, I think it depends on the kid. I mean, some kids don't respond to, like, getting in your face yelling kind of stuff. But that is true. I would agree with that. So you really just need to know them. Especially girls. The girls are a different creature altogether. Glepsy coming in for Towner. I, I didn't think Towner was going to get off the court there for a second. I was going to play with six. She finally got out of there. The steal away by Yarbrough. A little spin move. And she gets it across the front court. Dumps off for a three. No good. Offensive board by Naylor. And that is good. And we have got a contact. Maybe? Oh, she's got blood on her knee. Or she has blood. Oh, good call. Good call there by my wife, Heather. She doesn't miss anything, folks. That's all right. On top of it. All seeing and all knowing. I'm like Santa Claus. A wealth of knowledge, too. She's like a blanket. Covers everything. Ooh, hard physical screen on that far wing. It opens up an opportunity for Van Buren down low. A little too strong off the glass. I believe that was Sullivan with the board who just checked in. I'm sorry, Chloe no, it was Mitchell. Chloe Mitchell, yeah. Chloe Mitchell, the sophomore. Glipsy, good active hands. They could not come up with it. Fortunus bounce goes Naylor's way. Good ball movement down low. Tack on two for the girls in black. Great job by Rodriguez for finishing that. It's easier said than done when you're wide open down there and you got people storming after you. You've got to be calm, cool, and collected. Oh, nice dribble drive by Golepsi off the glass. No good. She kind of underhanded that one just a little bit. And what I mean by that, when you underhand it like that, you almost got to finger roll it. And when you finger roll it, there's a little extra top spin on it. And I think that's what happened to her there. 
Good physical defense, aggressive by Van Buren, especially in the last couple of drives. We've got a tie ball game. 2.05 to go in this opening quarter. Ball stripped out of bounds, and it will be long to the Lady Dogs of Van Buren. Trying to get something here for. Shot is no good, cleared out. It's Chloe Mitchell. She's a rebounding machine, is she not? She is. <laughs> Can we get the little girl in red on the other, other sideline over there? She's dancing around right there by the basketball right now. We'll take you off the coverage for just a sec, just to get this little girl in there. That little girl has got a ton of energy, folks. Let's get back to the action. We'll go back to her here in just a second. Good defense there, but it's going to be a foul, I believe. No, they're going to say it's a good, clean block. No, now they're going to say it is a foul. Okay. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, that little girl in red over there was just a dancing away. Uh, you can see her at the top left-hand corner of your screen. I don't know. What is she? I don't know. Two, she looks like she's three. Moose's age. Yeah, probably two. Same About age two, as our youngest. Two, three, yeah. First one's up. It is pure. Net. Yeah, I love the sound of that. Swish. And I'm going to disagree with the way you're pronouncing her name, and it's just been a bird in my saddle. <laughs> you, <laughs> you say Glepsy? It's Gillespie. It's, I believe it's Gillespie. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to call her Maya. There you go. Thanks, dear, for always pointing out my flaws on <laughs> public uh, TV, on the public domain. I really do appreciate that. You're so welcome. Yeah. You're so welcome. Well, you printed out that I can't say dog. So Dogs. Um, I just want to point that out. If that's your return serve you're saying. I am. Yeah. yeah. Three's no good. A little off the mark. Offensive board, though. You know, I think Coach Foster and company are really wanting to feed that ball down low. How many shots have they shot off the block? Hmm. Several of them. Yeah. Did you get the uh... – No, I did not. Okay, here. That will really help you out if you're trying to communicate with anybody. And it is – Sorry, guys, trying to fix the score here. There we go. We got eight to seven. There we go. Second one's up. It is also good. That'll tie it up. Or, sorry, that'll be nine to eight. I apologize. We got our scoreboard a little uh, backwards up here. That's okay. Under a minute to go. Go ahead. It says eight to eight. Well, that's what I thought it was, too, but I just assumed I was wrong. My wife has uh, embedded that into my head, and I just assumed that I was wrong, so <laughs> couldn't have been the scoreboard operator. It had to have been me. Checking in for Van Buren, number 45. That's Mackenzie Ricker, the freshman for Van Buren. I want to give a shout-out here. To, actually, I'll wait till the end of the quarter, actually. We're almost in the quarter, 40-something seconds, and I'll give a shout-out to a young lady I know. we got a jump ball. Uh, good. 85 foot from the basket. That's what that pressure does, that full court pressure, especially when you get into kind of those those sideline corner areas where you can trap and double team like they are doing. Give Van Buren credit. They're picking the right places to do it. Right there would have been a good one too, and Naylor just got it away. In a hurry in transition now off the backboard, no good, a little strong. Ball's tapped out on the ground. It's anybody's basketball, they're going to say a jump ball. Jump ball. 24.2 is the game clock. And that's going to be Ricker, your trigger lady. No, never mind. They're going to say Naylor basketball. Yeah, they're looking a little confused I down there. I don't think that's the case here. Something's. There we go. Okay. I was going to say now, listen, my, my eyes can deceive me at times. I am getting older, but uh, I didn't think that was the case. Yeah, we're a little high up here. It's a little hard to see, you know. That's why I suggested that I get some binoculars to see. How about Ooh. Gillespie? There you go. On the dribble drive, the strong drive, strong take, strong finish. 
and she'll have two at the charity stripe. Hey, nothing, nothing charitable or free about that. You've got to earn that right to go to that charity stripe. And Maya, she did that. Oh, my, Maya, that was a good-looking shot there. Good form, tucked the elbow, had the knees bent, followed through and landed forward, not sideways or backwards. A lot of kids uh, today, society, they'll watch the NBA and see these guys doing these jumpers, uh, and they'll land sideways or fading or here or there, and that is not your textbook way. Those are some really <laughs> incredibly talented people, uh, very, very few far in between. And She's got some different colored shoes on tonight. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I did because, you know, we always talk about her shoes. Yeah. In, 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 a, good, in a good way. We always talk about she her those, shoes. Like they're bright like a green and yellow. Lime like, green slash teal, maybe. Yeah, like uh, tie dye kind of. Yeah, looking. yeah. yeah maybe like. she's superstitious like I am. Change her shoes up. Or. Oh, good move. She might be after you know because they lost tonight. So. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She may not ever wear those shoes again. That's right. Five seconds down to three. Dribble drive at the buzzer. No good. Good defense down low by Sandra uh, Rodriguez. We played one quarter of basketball here at the heart of the Ozarks Van Buren, Missouri. It is Van Buren JV 10, Naylor's JV 8. Hey, I want to give a shout-out to a friend of mine down there, an assistant coach for Naylor, if I can, real quick. Her name is Chelsea Rigdon, if I can get her on the camera here. That's a horrible view there, guys. I apologize. There we go. That's just a smartphone. It's not a very good camera, so... That is Chelsea Riggins. She's in her second or third year, I think, as being an assistant coach there at Naylor. She graduated from there, a very good basketball player. She's quiet as a mouse, but uh, darn good kid, and I'm so proud of her. She followed her dreams. She chased her dreams, and she wanted to be a, a coach, and now that's what she's doing. So wanted to give her some love there. Give my wife some love for the awesome job that she has done tonight. Awesome job. She came up here, and this is what, your third time by yourself, second time? It's not easy. There's a lot going on, and she's just third done a time. third time. Done an excellent job. Y'all need to thank her for real, because I couldn't have got off work in time to do this. So um, we're, we've been struggling getting help um, to know the system, set up the system, run the system. And without her, we wouldn't have been able to do this tonight. So I want to thank this uh, BEA beautiful lady right here. Also, thank all the staff and faculty here at Van Buren that uh, have been so good to us, so kind to us. Good. Yes, they have good hospitality. The staff and people here are just amazing. So kind and so welcoming and so friendly. I just I love it. It is refreshing. It really is. Obviously, yeah. we're not from here, so um, for, for for them to be like that to us is pretty cool. So uh, really like it. Y'all support us and you stand behind us, and it means a lot. So. 5.40 to go in this JV. Again, only playing a half. Open three near side. No good. How about Maya? Crashing the boards down there. Number 21 in white. She has that long hair. Look at that. She does have long hair. Very pretty hair. It's like a fox. Fades there at the end, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, like it. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And it's uh, flapping in the wind right now because she's flying down the court, racing down the court. Nice dish for an open three. Clanked off the side of the iron. And I think it's going to stay with Van Buren. Let's watch the instant replay there. I, I, I think that's a good call by the officials. Ooh, maybe. Okay. Maybe it was. It. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to instant replay that one. I should have left that one alone. Should have ate it. <laughs> Either way, see Naylor, the basketball gods. They come back. See, Naylor's getting the basketball now. It all worked out. That's Yarbrough there. Some good ball movement. Good strong pass across the way, across the timeline. Right back to her little give and go. Dribbles down low off the backboard, off the block. No good. Excellent rebound down there by Towner. She hustled to get in position for that rebound. Ooh, almost a double dribble and almost a steal. And somehow Van Buren's going to look out and keep this basketball here. Cleaver will be your trigger lady. Looking for some movement away from the basketball, and they just don't have any right now. Ah, very clever. We got some folks from Twin Rivers. Uh, that's where we're from. 
And uh, they are taking pictures of us over there across the way right now. I'll see if I can get their attention. I'll wave at them as they uh, – maybe they'll see. There we go. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. That's the IT lady, Manda. Hey, do me a favor. What's uh, What was your name one more time? Bryce? Okay. What grade are you in? Sophomore. I'm going to give some love to Bryce, the sophomore. Are you ready? I'm going to get him on camera here. Get you a little love here from Mr. Bryce, the sophomore. This is our cameraman extraordinaire tonight right there. Look at that. We had Jackson earlier. At Jackson, and we got babyface Bryce on the way. He's doing a great job for us. Bryce, can you get – there's some Twin Rivers fans up there in blue. About middle of the way up, there's a lady uh, in glasses. Uh, just just, just up above the cheerleader there. If you'll zoom in, right there, yeah, zoom, 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 right there. There's Amanda, the IT lady. She sent me a message and was waving across the way. So just because she did that, I'm going to get her on, on live TV. All right, we're good now. That's Amanda. She's the <laughs> IT lady. We uh, are going to be needing her big time here soon. Good feet down low, no good. We're going to need her big time because we are doing a four-day tournament at Brosley at Twin Rivers, the Lady Royals Christmas Classic, and uh, that'll be on Redline Media Lines. We hope you tune in with us. 16 teams, 26 games, and we'll stream every darn one of those. It's going to be a long four days, but we'll get through it. Well, Van Buren down there, they uh, did an excellent job of finishing strong, and they're up by two possessions now. Mitchell, good feed down to Yarbrough. Say Yarbrough, when she gets ahead of a steam, it's hard to stop that number 20 in black. Speaking of, how about number five, Cleaver? She was fouled. Was she Did fouled? Did you call her the Cleaver? No. Number five, Cleaver. I know. I thought you said the Cleaver. No, I didn't say the Cleaver. Nope. <laughs> Not like the Kraken. Or... The Cleaver. Tell you, Cleve was weaving through a lot of people there. I will say that, though. Number five, you can tell a good ball player. Going to be a good ball player here. Just a freshman, number five in white. Didn't sink the free throws. But does a good job of getting to that free throw line. There's that trap right there, so dangerous. Trying to pivot out of it is Naylor to no avail. We've got a jump ball. Possession arrow does favor Naylor, though. They will retain possession. they got to have someone to take the ball out, though. The Arbor finally sees that, and she's going to come up there and snatch that basketball. That little give and go there from Hollis is beautiful stuff. It sounds easy. You just catch the ball, and then you wait and give it back to somebody, but it never is. when you. A lot of times when you get that basketball and there's much pressure as Van Buren's applying, it's easy to panic and start dribbling or pivot and, and travel or whatever it may be, and, and Hollis does not do that. Gracie, she does a good job. And she keeps her head up, looks for that, that slash, that give and go. A platoon of changes here for Van Buren. A plethora of girls going off the court and coming on the court. Van Buren does have a lot of girls. They do, I will say that's, that. That's great. That is great. To have that kind of depth. And yes. Naylor, good job defensively. A good spin move right into the heart of the paint there. Mitchell kick out near side. Hollis to the wing corner. Yarbrough for the long two. No good. It was in and out. Boy, that rim was unkind there. Do you see anybody else over there on the uh, Twin River side that you know that maybe uh, next time out we can zoom in on and Give, uh, give a hard time yeah, to Yeah, I mean, I see okay. a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the whole crowd? Or <laughs> <laughs> I see uh, right offhand um, Samantha and Teddy Porch. Again, like my is vision it it, is, is it, just not the greatest. Do, um, I see the do you notice him? Do you notice him quickly because he's bald? And there's a shine coming off the head? Well, is that he's got on a white T-shirt. Oh, that helps. Um, okay. Okay. Um, like a very bright white T-shirt against a yellow background. <laughs> it definitely sticks out. And then I see the Hesters above them. 
We'll have to the get Adams. all of them on camera. The Open three, no good. Fam the Adams family. Dun 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 dun. Um. Dun 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 dun. So yeah, I see several people. I wish I had the confidence. I just really can't see very well. We'll get you some. If there's anybody here that has binoculars, please bring. <laughs> these this Van Buren folks are always so good to us. Do, do y'all have, like, binoculars, binoculars somewhere? Binoculars, yeah. Because yes. uh, my wife get me some. my wife could use them. I wish I had the confidence that Olivia Yarborough has in Bertoni and Black. You could say she's trigger happy out there when she gets the basketball, but she's shooting with confidence. I love it. Hey, <clears throat> what is it you always tell me? You miss... 100%, 100 of, of the shots you don't take. Amen to that. <laughs> All kidding aside, you are obviously a very good basketball player and has looked very good here. And she's been one of the very aggressive ones for Naylor here in this JV game. Speaking of aggressive, the defense from Van Vuren. That's Travis going up strong. No good, a little too hard. That rebound ricochets back to Van Buren, though. Off a Ooh. knee. we got bodies on the floor. The basketball and comes up to <laughs> Maya. Kick out. Travis thought about that three. A little shy. Maya, oh. the underhand layup again. You want to see her kind of keep that two hands strong, and then when she's going up, keep it up kind of near your neck, maybe in your chest, and then go up with it. That way you're not scooping it. She's almost scooping it, and what she's having to do is finger roll that thing from down low. Not only that, but you get teams that have bigger size. The last thing you want to do as a big down there is keep it low. Yeah, you want to keep it high. Yeah, they're going to get out of your hands before you even get close but obviously, to the basket. Maya, good ball player, very young too, a sophomore. She'll, right. she'll learn that. Yeah. Coach Erica Smith and Tori Rickle. She's Rick got Will. a good future ahead of her. She does. You mentioned her getting some playing time in the varsity, and she's earned it. Oh, nice inbound Ooh, pass. Good there's move. another young girl that's got a lot of play time for the varsity towner. That was beautiful. That's beautiful basketball off the inbound too. Then they get a hand on a deflected pass. Diving for it. Oh, I love the effort there. I don't know if our camera guy got that on camera or not, but watch this. Watch number 13 here, folks. That's Morgan. Oh, man. That is effort. I love it. Long two. No good. It's tapped out of bounds. I should say spiked out of bounds. That looked like a volleyball spike. Yeah. Oh, I see Tara Christman over there now. As my focus... My eyes come into focus. <laughs> <laughs> you have to give them a second. 147 to go. Hey, guys, we've got a five-point game now. This game is not over. That's just two possessions. 16 fouls against Naylor, only two against Van Buren. Possession arrow is in favor of Van Buren. Double team on that corner. Good dribble drive, oh, blow by. She tried to pass indoor there, but they just weren't on the same oh, page. Tell you what, number 13. Oh. Morgan had an awesome opportunity there. Just couldn't quite come up with it. Mitchell on the other side. Rebounded by Hollis going up strong. She draws the foul. I said Hollis, but that may be Rodriguez. Is that what they said? Yeah. 34 was the foul. And if so, that's Kalia Love. Kalia Love. We're going to call her Kalia Love. Kylie? Could be, could be Kylie. What are you saying? Kalia. <laughs> to the Love family, I do apologize. Uh, <laughs> I love you guys. He's not I'm up sorry. With these hip names. I'm really not. I'm trying, though. Hollis has an opportunity to cut this to four right here. Free throws up, no good. Rebound comes right to her. It's on the ground, though. Van Buren comes up with it. Good job by Travis there, scooping that basketball off the court. That'll break a nail there when you're going to scoop it off that hardwood. Ooh, Maya might have got away. Well, I thought no, uh, she, she, she didn't, tried, though, she didn't get away with it. <laughs> I said I thought she was going to get away, but she didn't. No. Oh, not quite. Good effort there. 107 <laughs> to go. Naylor needs a score right now. My wife is coughing all over the microphone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's now trying to apologize, trying to get y'all sympathy, and it's just not working. You know what I should have been doing? I should have been listening to the uh, – the comments, and I apologize. I'm, I'm normally better at that. I'm so sorry, everybody. 105 to go in this ball game, though. I'll, I'll pull them up while you, you do your job. Do my job. <laughs> yes, ma'am, <laughs> boss lady. Um, That's Hopkins, your trigger lady. Van Buren, see if they go to a man-to-man -man or if they stick with a zone here. Looks like they're trying to front number 25, Rodriguez. 
Mitchell, top of the key. Dribble drive to the free throw line. Elbow extended. Under a minute to go now. That's Hopkins near side. Down low to Mitchell. Good move. Spin move off the rim. No good offensive rebound. Soft touch, and it's in. And, folks, don't look now. We've got a one-possession game in this JV action. Remember, we're only playing one half. This is it right here. 30 seconds to go if you're Naylor. <laughs> you got to figure out who you're going to foul. I don't know who Randy Sullivan is, but I love you. Holy Dutton Ranch Dandy. <laughs> <laughs> we love Randy. Here comes oh, Chloe Mitchell and company. They got 15 awesome. seconds. Coach Foster's wanting them to hurry up. They're down by three. Will they try to tie it here on a shot? Looking at it. That was Hopkins down low, going up strong off the glass. No good. Six seconds, rebounded out by the Lady Dogs. Cleaver's got it on the far (laughs) sideline. That'll be it. Congratulations to the junior high, or sorry, the JV Van Buren Lady Dogs on their victory. Let's bring you up here to the booth. The booth. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Uh, Randy's a good dude. The other night he was, I always say holy hay bells, and he, he was trying to do some other. It was a lot of fun. I, that Holy spit wads. That's another one we say sometimes. <laughs> Holy Dutton Ranch Nandy. Do you know what that means? Hannah says, can I go to Abby's? No. I tell you what, good help is hard to find, isn't it? Good help <laughs> is really hard to find. <laughs> She's babysitting. <laughs> you should be ashamed, Hannah. You should really be ashamed. Um, after, you're better after, than that. After she goes to sleep. Um, is that duct tape? That is so awkward. Look at this. <laughs> Look at the screen. There's a piece of duct what? tape. That's so random. It's just right. It's right there. It's right there in the. Oh my God. There you go. She's a gift. She's uh, a gift. Zachary uh, Wetzel said, "Did she just point out Andy Earl's big head?" Thanks, Zach. Do Thought I we were have friends. to really? Though I mean, Thought we were friends. That's mean. Hey, someone once said I had a five head. Uh, no, it's not that big. Uh, baby, I don't it's not. Um, it's all, all those it's, brains. It's it's elongated. What? It's elongated. I'll just say this. Those one size fits all hats, it's a load of crock. They do not yeah, fit all. Bless his heart. I didn't believe him until I saw it. Hi, Moose. In person. Hi, Moose. Our little girl is two years old, and she's at home. I think she's watching us, uh, according to Hannah. Hey, baby. It's time to go to sleep. It's time to go to sleep. Night, night time. I love no, you. I don't think it is quite yet, is it? We're trying to help Hannah out. She's wanting to go see Abby. <laughs> Gosh. I had your back, Hannah. I had your back. I'm so sorry. She says, y'all suck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Zachary Wetzel, thank you, Andy Earls and Heather, for bringing the live action to us. No, thank you, Zach. No, thank you. Chanel Hunter, go Katie Griffin. Well, Chanel, she did go. She's a good one. Monica Tillman said, let's go Naylor. And Monica, they did. They won the uh, varsity game. And uh, JV, they came just a little bit short. Guys, we've got seven minutes before we bring you some, I assume, JV basketball between Twin Rivers. Are we going to get kicked off again because of the music? Hopefully they can't hear it. So what okay. we're going to do is we're going to go to our sponsor video. Hey. As we got a mad dog, Maddie comes up here. We'll go to our sponsor video. We'll be right back. Welcome to Dog Pack Media Live. Andy Earls here, your owner-operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all the support. This is year two of Dog Pack Media. We're excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see in this ad video. Actually, scratch that. We are cutting the entire feed. I'm going to cut it right now, and we're going to start back over. So this feed will be done, and we'll start over with a new one for Twin Rivers and Van Buren Boys JV and Varsity. All right, guys, we'll be right back. You'll have to exit this one, and we'll start another one here in just a few minutes. Missouri, they design and build custom long homes for you to create years of memories. They carry many different... 